So let's get started. What we're going to do is we'll explore some of these nodes or blocks and then we'll run them to see how the output looks like. So right away when I click this block, there are a few different options up here and also there are a few options available in the UI. So I can type in the message here or I can select the sender name and change this. Both of these are input blocks. Also, I can maximize this message if needed to edit text in a larger screen. Now, in addition to that, there are options up here, as mentioned before. So the first one that you see is a code option. When you open that, you'll actually see the inner working of this particular block. The beauty of Langflow is that you can actually go in, change the code associated with the block if you are familiar with the code and then save it. And then you can make these blocks work based on your configuration and you can change the configuration if needed, or you can change the value or the processing that happens within that block. So there are quite a few things that you can do with these blocks. Now you can save the block if needed, or you can duplicate the block. So this particular node is a chat input. This is not gonna duplicate, but everything else can duplicate. So for example, I can go here and duplicate the block and then use it elsewhere as needed. I can hit keyboard shortcuts as well. So I'm going to hit delete, which deletes that block. And I'm going to go back here. Now the icon to freeze actually freezes the output that goes from this particular block. So if I were to say hi, what's going to happen is if I were to run this particular block and the way we can run it is by hitting the play button. Now I see that this particular block has a check mark. And if I were to hover over that, I'll see that the message was high from the user that we define up here and it's the sender's name. So all of that info ran fine and it gave us certain value as an output. Now, if we were to freeze that value, then we have the output from this particular block available to us without having to run the block each time. So that can come in handy if we have a bunch of blocks together. So we don't want it to run each time. And then there are also some advanced options that we can look at different parameters available from this block. So we're going to use these as we build the flow. Now, once we run this block, I said hi. And then the next block that I see is the prompt block. In this block, I see an option over here that says user input. And this particular user input was added because in our template, we went in and we gave certain instructions as prompt. And then we had this variable user input provided as part of instructions. And anytime we have a certain value within curly braces, that means it is an input that we are expecting as part of this block. So in here, we said it's user input within curly braces. And we were told by the editor here that the prompt variable is going to be user input. And then when we go out, we see that that particular variable is available to us. And now what we can do is we can connect the line. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to click that line and delete it. And then I'll show you how that looks like. So I'm going to go here and I can attach it to the user input. So in that way, any text or record that we had sent from the block earlier can be provided to this block in here as prompt input. Great, now from here, we can go on to the next block. This is a block for OpenAI model calling. And we see here that it has an option to select one of the available models as default. It also has an option to provide API key that you can obtain from OpenAI website. You can also change the temperature value as well as you can provide certain input to the block. And in our case, we're saying the input is going to be the prompt together with the chat input that came from the user. And then we send that value over to this particular block. So for experimentation purposes, I'm going to run the prompt block, which also had value from the chat input. I'll run this just to see what was the value that we get out of this. If I hover, I see that it contains 
the instructions as well as the user input value which is high great now that we know that this block or this node is working fine what i can do is i can freeze this so i don't have to run this each time the next block of course if we were to run this we need to provide an openai api key now this is something i obtained from openai website and i pasted the value in here and because it is a password form this is something i need to keep secret it is by default shown as password field and if i wanted i could have saved the variable by clicking this particular icon the globe icon and by adding a variable once we click add a new variable we see that there is an option to add a variable name, provide a value for that particular field. It could be something generic or it could be a credential. So in our case, it was a credential. So we're going to select credential. And for the variable name, we're going to call it OpenAI API key, insert the value for the key. And then you can choose if needed as what type of key it is. So in our case, it was OpenAI API key. We could select that and paste the value and save the variable. I'm not doing that because I already saved the value as is in the UI up here. Again, you have an option to either save the global variable so you don't have to enter that value each time. Or if you want to just enter temporarily for now, then you can go ahead and enter the value and run this blog. I'm going to give it a try by hitting play. And now I see that I got a green check mark here saying that it worked fine. And the response back as per instructions by our prompt to respond as a pirate is something that was followed by the OpenAI model. And we get a response back in pirate language. Great. So everything till here is working fine. Now we can run the last block, which is the chat output. Since I know this is working fine, I can just freeze this. And then for the chat output, we just want to provide something as an output from this flow that we built here. So I'm going to hit play and it's just going to be the same value that we got from the block before. Since we know everything else is working fine, this is also working fine. Now we have a green check mark and basically we have a sender, which is a machine in this case with a certain message that we can now send out of this particular flow. Now, once we have all of these check marks and everything is working fine, what we can do is we can also go to the playground and start the conversation here. I can say as previously asked, hi, and then we get a response back as pirate. So this is quite nice. It is a chat based UI where you can see your messages and also you can see messages back from the large language model. You can erase the history if needed. Also in the local or hosted version, you'll probably see a few more options available here. This is the cloud version, which is the simple uh, UI for chat.